The media is among Russia's targets in this war. This TV tower in the Ukrainian capital, Kiev, was bombed. Evgeny Sakun was among those killed. He's the first journalist reported to have died in this conflict. And this war and the information war that's come with it are placing differing demands on the media in Ukraine, the West and in Russia, where a further crackdown is happening. Some independent media like Echo, Moskvi Radio have been taken off air and the state media watchdog is telling media covering the conflict they're obliged to use information and data received by them only from official Russian sources, which leads the Moscow correspondent of The Guardian to describe a de facto military censorship over its invasion of Ukraine and that there's a ban on words like war, invasion or attack. And I wanted to look at the media dimension of this war through the experiences of seven people. The first is Ivan Kolpakov. He's editor-in-chief of Medusa. It's an independent Russian news outlet which publishes via Latvia. Medusa in April 2021 was marked as, an, as a foreign agent in Russia. And it, uh, it was a, a, um, a very challenging uh, time for, for, for our editorial uh, staff. Uh, and a lot of other media outlets were also labeled as a, as, a, as a foreign agents. But now they are just directly blocking the websites and they are now using the, uh, Roskomnadzor as a real censorship department of Russian state. I don't think uh, that we have may, much time left, to be honest, in, in, in the country. I think that we're going to be blocked in, in a few days, maybe in a few hours. Also covering this war is Olga Malchevska from BBC Ukrainian. Until recently, she was in Kiev, but she's now in London. And on Friday, she found out that her family's home in Kiev had been destroyed. I went to the official sources, to other sources, to verify the pictures. And only when I got the confirmation that there was definitely that address, and when I got that confirmation from from the official Ukrainian emergency service and also when I saw the same kind of footage from my neighbors, I was able to say that yes, that is that is the, that particular building. So and I'm describing that to to let you know that that procedure is the same for all our BBC Ukrainian journalists. So we even we if we emotionally know, let's say that that object was targeted or that person was targeted, unfortunately, we do verify it from several sources and we do not report anything emotionally. We've heard from a Ukrainian and a Russian journalist. Next, let's hear from Western journalists covering this conflict. For the media show on Radio 4, I asked Lindsay Hilsom of Channel 4 News to record her thoughts. This is what she sent from eastern Ukraine. I think that in any war zone, you can't tell the big picture when you're right in it. You can only know what you've seen and what people around you have told you. But I think it's tremendously important to put that into some kind of historical context. Because if you don't put it into a historical context, well, it's just meaningless, isn't it? It's just people being horrible to each other. It's just cruelty. And this conflict, as much as any other, it's about the history of it. What Russians have traditionally thought about Ukrainians, the position of Ukraine, Ukraine as a nation, all of that. This issue of context, of seeing the whole picture, is also on Roland Oliphant's mind. He's the senior foreign correspondent of The Telegraph, and he sent me this on WhatsApp. I always tell people that war reporting, in a way, is the easiest kinds of journalism. Um, because, in a way, it's kind of effortless. All you've got to do, go somewhere, see what's happening, talk to people, write it down, bang, there's your story. The, the flip side of that, which I really, really, really feel in this conflict, is that you're a tiny, tiny cog in an absolutely enormous machine. And you can see and know very little. People, people talk about the first draft of history. You know, pompous journalists like to talk about the first draft of history. It's not. If it is, it's a very whole draft, because you don't know what's going on. You can only, you know, your line of sight is very limited. I haven't seen a single Russian soldier yet. I've been close to them. I've heard them. I've heard them firing their guns. I've heard their cannons and their artillery. I haven't seen a single Russian. Um, often where I'm in a place, all I know is that explosions are occurring or people are running or that people are scared. Uh, those people often don't know any more than I know. Also in Ukraine is The Guardian's Luke Harding. Here he reflects on the challenges of reporting this war. 
the, the day the invasion started, I just went to Kiev's Independence Square and I, I did the most basic journalistic exercise. I did vox box. I talked to people about how they felt. Amazingly, there was a coffee bar which was open, and I talked to people who, who you know, about their feelings and their um, uh, expectations. Uh, and just on on the logistics, it's true. I mean half of your brain is dealing with trying to get the story out as accurately and as well um, and as compassionately as possible to tell human stories and I guess to bear witness to what's going on. But the other half is worrying, <clears throat> excuse me, about security, about fixes, about roads in a, in a constantly shifting position where, where Russia is advancing and, and a roadblock that was okay two hours ago may not be okay two hours later. So it's uniquely challenging, but, but I'm, I'm very glad I'm here. Luke Harding is in Lviv in the West. The BBC's Clyde Myrie is in Kiev at the moment. You may have seen his thoughts on the war being widely shared. None of us are forced to come here. Um, it's part of our job. Um, we all feel that we want to tell the story of this war and tell it accurately and fairly. And that is really important because there is so much... I was going to use the word crap, but I might as well. There is so much crap out there mm. that is misinformation, propaganda, nonsense. And that challenge of sifting through what's true and what isn't is there for journalists, but it's there for all Russians and all Ukrainians too. And in Russia, TV remains a vital communication tool. Here's Ivan Kolpakov again. Since the Kremlin has uh, controls 80 or 90 percent of the market, they can easily create uh, um, a fake picture of reality. Um, that's why so many people uh, within Russia, unfortunately, um, I wouldn't say support, they, but I would say indifferent about uh, what's going on in Ukraine. And we know that many Russians watch and believe what State TV reports. My colleague Steve Rosenberg visited one Moscow resident, Valentina. A lot of what they say on TV, it's truth. It's true. How do you know? Well, you know, when I, when I read in, in a foreign newspaper uh, that, you know, Russians bomb uh, Kharkov and they and so on, so on, you know that it's not true because uh, they promise not to do this and they will never do this. And so we see both sides of this conflict communicating with their own people and with the world. And, of course, for Russian and Ukrainian journalists, this is intensely personal, as I heard in this exchange on the media show, because Ivan Kolpakov wants to make this point. It's horrible, and it is also one of the results. Um, it is also one of the results of this, you know, this situation with independent media. And I, I don't, I'm not sure that I will be able to say that. I just want. I think we all have to. It, it is a necessary, a necessary thing to say if you're a Russian journalist or. Um, or anyone from Russia right now, I want to say sorry to my Ukrainian colleagues. I feel terrible personally. I'm broken. And um, I'm angry about Russian authorities. I think it is a real catastrophe for Russia. And I'm really sorry that we didn't stop Russian authorities from doing that. To which Olga Malchevska from BBC Ukrainian offered this reply. Obviously sending lots of empathy to you, but obviously the biggest, I don't know, lots of love goes to all the colleagues who are in Ukraine and all the people in Ukraine. And unfortunately, I must add that as far as we get in our reports from the ground, not all the Russian audience, audience can go in line with what Ivan said. So, and that is something very heartbroken for us to hear.